Welcome back. More than 500 LGBTQ candidates are set to appear on November ballots across the nation, shattering records. Some of those candidates include um, a lesbian Air Force veteran in Texas running for Senate, a transgender advocate in Delaware, and our next guest, John Hoadley, um, who could become Michigan's first openly gay congressman. Here to talk more about this campaign and the 2020 rainbow wave is John Hoadley. John, good to talk to you this okay. afternoon. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Let, let's talk about this this rainbow wave, as it's being called. We've we've seen it before in politics, right? We saw it back in 2016 a little bit. Um, Jared Polis becoming the first openly gay man to be elected governor in the United States. You also had um, Sharice Davids becoming the first Native American and lesbian to be elected to represent Kansas in the U.S. House. What do you think makes this year different, John? Uh, we've seen that equality is on the ballot. We know that with the Supreme Court race, uh, the Supreme Court appointment, that Congress will have an incredible role in protecting LGBTQ folks um, because of the decisions that will be coming down from that court. I think what we're seeing is that across the country, where people are stepping up, running because they want to be their authentic self, and they know that when we diversify who's at the table, that we get much better decisions for everybody. I think it's so awesome. I, I want to bring up... Um the numbers here. We have 1,006 LGBTQ people um, running for office in 2020. That's a 41% increase uh, between 2018 and 2020. 574 or more LGBTQ candidates will be on the ballot in November of 2020. I mean, the numbers are really astounding, John, just to see. I know that you told NBC News that you are running to affect change. What changes do you really want to see? Well, you know, uh, we always talk about, you know, I'm not running to make history, but I am running to make change. Yeah. You know, for me, it's going to always be about health care. My partner, Chris, has multiple sclerosis. So I know firsthand what it feels like to have to fight with insurance companies who oftentimes have more say over your treatment than your own doctor does. And whether we're talking about uh, drinking water and protecting our Great Lakes, whether we're talking about uh, supporting our schools and turning us away from the Betsy DeVos agenda or health care, I mean, these are the type of issues that are on the ballot, and uh, this is why so many of us are stepping up to run across the country. So you might have a couple roadblocks in the way um, if, in fact, so many LGBTQ candidates do win and are able to gain office um, in 2020. One of those roadblocks could feasibly be the Supreme Court, of course, with um, the possible confirmation, the vote happening tomorrow, possibly, of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. How concerned are you um, with her confirmation, potential confirmation to the Supreme Court? I'm incredibly concerned. Uh, we know that uh, after a rushed process that she has told us that she is hostile to the Affordable Care Act, meaning that coverage for pre-existing conditions um, are on the line just days after this election. You know, and I'm running against someone who voted to take away coverage for pre-existing conditions 12 times. We know that choice is on the ballot. She's attacked, she is, uh, doesn't believe that Roe is settled law. And that means that our reproductive freedom is on the line. She has clearly used hostile language towards LGBTQ folks, which means that in a state like Michigan, where uh, marriage equality is only legal because of a Supreme Court decision, that that's on the line. And you know, the other piece though, that I'll just note here yeah. is that getting across the finish line is gonna be difficult because what we're seeing is as more and more LGBT people step up to run, that there is a whole new wave of homophobic attacks happening. You know, I'm actually in a race where the Victory Fund that supports LGBTQ candidates has said, I'm experiencing the most homophobic attacks wow. in the nation. Wow. And we're seeing it across, across the board. Um, and they're showing up in races up and down the ballot. And, you know, this feels like it's, uh, we know we're in 2020, but it feels like we're back in the 1990s or like 1986 when the guy I'm running against why, first got elected. Why do you feel like the that? Type of why do you feel like that's happening? Why do you feel like you're such a target? Um, because people know that stereotypes and discrimination run deep, and so when they can't win on the issues, they try to run and have smears and lies, and so they're appealing to um, a set of base voters. They're you know, and they're fanning QAnon-like conspiracy theories. And, you know, the thing that I keep thinking, though, is that the only way that we are going to stop these types of attacks in the future is that we've got to beat the bullies at the ballot box. And that mm -hmm. means everybody's got to go out and vote. And LGBTQ candidates and good candidates across the country need support. John Hoadley, good luck. Stay connected to us.